You are listening to the MS Power User Podcast. This is episode 37, recorded Thursday, March 9th of 2017. Each week on this podcast, we discuss the latest news about Microsoft, such as new Samsung tablets, Xbox Scorpio, Insider Builds, Windows Phone is still hanging in there, Windows Server on ARM, but probably not your ARM, updates to Microsoft's streaming entertainment apps, and of course, Windows. Today we're going to cover all that and a bit more, which I couldn't quite fit into the intro. My name is Vernon E.L. Smith, and I'm joined, as usual, by Andy Bennett. Hi, Andy. What's up, buddy? Hey. Well, there is quite a bit. And uh, for anyone listening who might notice the tone in my voice, it's because I have been fighting with basically all of technology for the past hour and a half, and eventually that takes its toll on you. And oddly enough, I'm having a pretty good day. I've been up since... I have yeah. I've transferred basically all of my luck to him. I've been up for about 21 hours so far, and uh, my computer's actually running pretty well, better than usual. Uh, this isn't really newsworthy. Uh, let's talk about the weather. Andy, did you get any wind? I have got, I have got, I got so much wind that uh, it was, it got to be like forty miles per hour last night around here, and uh, I wake up to deal with the damages. I'm fun. Honestly, <laughs> not trying to outdo you, but we had seventy mile an hour winds here for a while, and um, that's, that's a con- that's a contest. I'm happy to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not <laughs> proud of that. Um, and it got pretty cold. Well, it was y- yucky. It was icky yesterday. And then tonight, I think it's supposed to get uh, nine below tonight, oh, man. which I was, we were not expecting. We had spring. Like, all the snow was melted. Like, it was, yay, but we were playing outside. Today was, actually, today was uh, like 40 to 50 degrees, but it actually wasn't that bad. And then tonight, all of a sudden, it just dips and the snow starts falling. Hmm. Which, like, I mean, it's they said it was like 45 degrees earlier and i walk out there and it's like you know what if this is 45 degrees then then all of summer can be 45 degrees <laughs> well it was fantastic early in the week and it is very far from fantastic right now but we yeah. are recording a podcast just earlier we thought you know this isn't that bad of a gig huh yep and uh we enjoy doing this so you, listener, probably enjoy actually hearing some information from us aside from the weather. So let's kick it off. And we're going to start it off Alrighty. with a tip this week. We want to make sure that you guys get every opportunity to be as power userful, is that a word, as possible. We'll as make you, it one. As, you, uh, as, of course, you follow mspoweruser.com. We appreciate that. So first of all, we're going to talk about these um, the File Explorer in Windows 10. Which I should say, as an as a relatively old person and uh, not very glamorous person, I said this years ago. I love the File Explorer. It, it really is is good. There's a lot of great features in there. Whatever. I'm not going to dwell on that. But starting in some of the insider builds, and then now it has been rolled out to everyone using the uh, anniversary update RS1. Uh, the the explorers <laughs> explorers the File Explorer has what you would call ads. Now, they're kind of just prompts, just saying, hey, uh, check this out. You, uh, OneDrive is where you would probably see this in File Explorer. If you'd like more OneDrive storage, you get Office 365 and you get a terabyte, blah, 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 whatever. And other things, um, um, Outlook Premium and things like that might pop up in there. But technically it is an ad because Microsoft is trying to sell you something. Yeah, and we can uh, debate a lot about, uh, you know, if it's right to include this or not. I I think most people who follow me on Twitter should know where I stand because I have, I th- I think that over the years I've gone it on so many rants about uh, the people trying to claim that something that's an ad is just a personalized recommendation. I have gone on, I've gone on, I've gone on so many rants. I'm sure that's in double digits over the past two years. Well, but, I think my stance on streaming, or I should say, you know, television in general, kind of is similar to my stance on this, is that I would much rather just pay for the product and and get it, like Netflix. I pay for Netflix, and I don't see ads in there, as opposed to, well, cable in general. You have the, you're paying, Hulu. yeah, you're paying for cable, and you're getting ads. Are they not double dipping? 
in your mind, you know, you're both, you're both paying for it and you're giving them your, your time anyway. Um, but seeing these things, especially the ones that are, are examples right now in file Explorer, to me, they're actually good prompts to, Oh, Hey, that's true. This is a, this could be a useful service to me. And I think it is pretty relevant to where you are now. Of course they sneak these in and then eventually they're going to, you know, broaden further and further and, um, here, rent this uh, rent Suicide Squad for you know four ninety nine. The Oscar, the Oscar award uh, winning Suicide Squad. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so some people do not want these things in their file explorer. So we're going to give you a quick uh, rundown of how to disable them. And of course, you could just go to the site and do that. But if you can keep up with me talking, uh, maybe you could do it yourself without going to this site. I'll stop talking about that now. Open the View tab from File Explorer's ribbon. From there, you can click on Options. Open up File, File Explorer Settings. From the Folders option window, you click on View tab. And then you'll need to scroll down, and there's a whole list of you know ch boxes to check and uncheck. And the one that you're going to look for is Show Sync Provider Notifications. And uh, I'm not one to memorize things. I want to understand how it works and why. That way I can go back and kind of repeat repeatability. So think of it as Sync Provider Notifications. Your, your File Explorer Sync Provider is Microsoft, and they would be notifying you of additional ways to sync, uh, well, storage data, whatever. Uncheck that, and then you're going to, of course, hit save, okay, whatever. And there should be no uh, ads, or as they call them, notifications, in File Explorer for now. Alrighty. So it's an easy enough guide that I followed along with it in real time. Wow, I'm, I'm glad you could. <laughs> I hope our <laughs> listeners could. <laughs> Andy, tell us about what we have going on for a new Insider Build this week. All right. Yeah, there are two options uh, for the Insider Build this week, depending on your platform. See, last week, right after the podcast come out, had come out, there was another build that had uh, arrived. See, last week we talked about build uh, 15046. Well, now it, we have uh, 15048, which is such a good build that it has hit the hit the fast ring and ended up being the very first fast ring build of the year. Slow ring. Or, yeah, slow, slow ring. Oh, my goodness. We're recording this past midnight for me, and I think that's about to show. Even if I had some coffee, it is uh, starting to wear off, I guess. Yeah, my it's bad. my fault. Yeah. Eh, no worries. But so, yeah, this is the very first slow ring build of 2017, and it is... And, Compared to uh, 15046, there is a lot, not a lot of changes. I've, I mean, I'm saying this basically every week now, but we are past the point where we'll see a lot of those. Mm, excuse me. The biggest, the big things right now, though, are improvements and fixes. But if you are someone who has always just been in the slow ring, this build is going to be a completely different world for you. At least I'm pretty sure it will be, because throughout the builds this year, I mean, it's we're three months into the year now. There's there's enough changes that I'd say, yeah, there's going to be some significant improvements in there. However, just for build to build changes, there's stuff such as issues where some UWP apps might may unexpectedly appear with their app package name in the title bar as opposed to the app name. This is something that I saw a lot of people having issues with in, uh, say, I think it was uh, the music and uh, video apps because they I saw a bunch of people saying, hey, it's the Zoom name, which it's because that's the package name, and the package name has stayed Zune since the day it was created. So, yeah, it's still there. And as for other little things, there were some issues where using the mouse wheel to scroll in Microsoft Edge might not work if the window was made smaller or moved to a different monitor. That's a weird little issue there. Issues where the LastPass extension for Microsoft Edge sometimes failed, etc., etc. There's not that much here. There are still some known issues for the PC, of course, you know. Actually, I think I'm trying to figure out uh, some of the schedules for this. As it, uh, so there was some, uh, this, build, this build apparently went out to mobile too as well. I, oh man, I, this is an issue where just like today, today being a mess has completely wrecked me. But yeah, this is build uh, 15048. 
nothing too huge to change. But what I do want to talk about, though, is that I actually did, I actually am running this build right now. You know, people, I mean, people who have uh, followed this podcast for a while may know for the, may know that uh, I generally have stayed out of the Insider program. I was in there for up until the launch of, uh, boy, I think it was uh, around the time that Edge got introduced that I decided, you know what, this is too buggy, I can't run this on a main computer I'm going to use for uh, all my uh, actual work and stuff. i got to switch over to something stable. And so, of course, I did switch over to something stable, and I've stayed at that something stable for the entire time. Also, now, I, I, this week, you know, I decided, all right, you know what, I'm going to be getting a new computer soon anyway, so if something screws up, who cares? Well, the answer is me, but... It's not it's not as big of an issue. Well, so I decided I'd switch over, and I actually had uh, made my own ISO for this build and uh, did a clean install. This was right before it got pushed to the fast ring. And going from uh, the anniversary update to the creator's update, which is pretty much finished by now, with the exception of some uh, bugs and hiccups, it's pretty nice. It's not the biggest change in the world, but it's got it's got nice changes. Like, for example, blue light reduction, which I don't think that I can live without anymore. They call it night light now rather than blue light, but regardless, the idea is identical. It'll remove certain lights from the screen, and it'll just change it to this kind of a pretty pretty slight orangey tint. And it's amazing how simple... One simple change just changes everything to be so much nicer at night. Like, when I turn something off and it feels like I'm being punched in the face, generally I'd like to consider it an essential feature, you know? I'm glad you're enjoying it so far. Uh, that is, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, there's, there's just, there isn't really too much else of note for me. I mean, yeah, there's uh, some interesting stuff like game mode, but that isn't, is, it isn't the biggest performance enhancer in the world, which... I mean, no one really should have thought it was going to be one, seeing how uh, it's it's not like a Windows feature is going to get you a new GPU, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Well, speaking of the, um, uh, wow, what are we calling this? Creator's update. Speaking of the creator's update, Redstone 2, uh, it is it's coming basically it's it's pretty much to the rtm st- point uh well, not, not exactly not exactly what would be considered rtm but yeah we're nearing that yeah and it's not actually released to manufacturer they're calling it released to um mainstream or something and yeah. released to web uh yeah point being we're getting close feature lock is is there and we're basically it's coming out and we have uh the site ms power user has uh, I had confirmed with three different sources who are close to Microsoft's plans that Windows 10 Creators Update rollout will be kicking off on the 11th of April. So about a month away. Uh, it's it's coming, folks. We're getting there. It's actually going to be a month from the day that this podcast released. Actually, no, wait, no, it's past midnight, so uh, a week or er, month from Saturday. Oof, t- time is messing me up. So it's coming. It's going to be a, a gradual. I don't know how gradual, but it will be getting rolled out. It's not going to be like when Windows 10 was available. Everyone scrambled to download it all at once. But yeah, I'd say it's probably going to be comparable to the uh, anniversary update rollout, where it took over a month, actually over like two months, for everyone to end up with it. I knew people who didn't have it until, boy, uh. I know people, thinking about the people that I actually knew, I'd say it was close to a month and a half after the initial release that some that everyone I knew finally had it. Well, the computers in this house, of course, I manually start the update on them as soon as possible, but for everyone else, it took a while. Mm-hmm. All right, well, coming up next here, we're going to talk about Windows Phone because, of course, I like to talk about Windows Phone. But recently we did discover that there is still there's still a few Windows Phone devices out there. The number that's been getting thrown around is 3 million well around 3 million Americans still hanging on to Windows phones. I just I just want to I just want to stop you right there and say that you know like when you put this in percentage it doesn't sound like much but when you actually have like an act, when you actually have the actual number of people that's pretty significant. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, y- you think, okay, yes, just one percent, and yeah, it's just like one percent or not even one percent anymore. I don't even know, but three million people is just insane. When I read, you know, one percent or under one percent, I don't think three million. You know. Hmm. Well, think of it this way: that um, uh, one percent. Okay, I got to get my decimal points right. I got to do this like with a pen and paper. Three one percent of that of three million is still a huge number of people. Obviously, <laughs> that are that, that's true. One yeah, um, and that's just in America. So we're not gonna uh, dwell on this, but it's just kind of a reminder that even though it's a very small percentage is still a lot of people and it you know th- it makes sense that that would be microsoft it adds to the reasons that microsoft would want to continue keeping windows 10 mobile windows phone and windows 10 mobile current obviously they're not keeping windows phone 8 1 current but um it, well it's funny thing about uh, windows phone uh, 8.1 now that you mentioned is that there was an issue a while ago where uh users couldn't uh download any apps from the store or any updates at all they're working on it enough that they actually fixed that, which surprised me. That's that's true. Yeah, so. it's surprising small thing, but that was that. It, it it was nice that they actually fixed it. Although one could argue, uh, if you can't download anything from the store on Windows eight point one, you know you can't upgrade to Windows ten mobile. But I'm not really sure how how much they're concerned about that anymore. Hmm. So, yeah, there's still a lot of us out there, even though it's a small percentage. All right, what else we have here? Okay, so at MWC, and I know this was a couple weeks ago here, but Samsung announced a, a book or a, a family of tablets, or, you know, two tablets, basically. Uh, the, the, the Galaxy Book and the two different devices. And these look pretty cool. And I know we talked about it, or we did not talk about it before, and that's the problem. I, I should have. And I really like the look of these things. It actually is a, a bit like, uh, well, it's, I think of it kind of a cross between a, a Surface as far as the keyboard and also um, the iPad because you have that rinky-dink, you know, you put like an aftermarket iPad uh, k- keyboard on the back of it and it looks kind of junky that way. But the keyboard itself looks like it's got, you know, like like a Surface keyboard. And for a long time, I've had very little respect for the Samsung tablets, this um, this cookie cutter, plasticky junk. But they're starting to get better. Recently, well, like I do, I do find it interesting, uh, you know, from a software perspective, that uh, Samsung has uh, really been supporting Windows 10. Mm-hmm. Like it, you, they are bringing support for stuff like. Uh, I forget the exact name. I believe it was Samsung Flow, which is available in the Windows Store right now. And uh, it allows you to take your Galaxy Android phone and use it to unlock your Windows 10 desktop or laptop, which is similar to one of Microsoft's own authentication apps, Mm -hmm. but still Kind of of similar to Dynamic Lock in a way. Yeah. Anyway, I... The store doesn't want me to search for Samsung right now because everything hates me, but yeah. Hmm. Well, I do like what what they have here so far. We've got uh, pretty well specced out. We'll talk about them a little bit later, and hopefully, it would be absolutely awesome if we had if we did end up getting some of these to review. But who? Wink, wink. Yeah, it, it'd be it'd be great. I'm not going to promise anything, but it would be pretty cool. Somewhere out there is a Samsung PR guy who's forced to listen to tech podcasts. This that that's that's for you. You mean he enjoys enthusiastically that, that, listening that, to this? That, that's it. That's it. Yep. yep. All right. So speaking of uh, tablets and, and cheap well, cheap uh, Windows devices, uh, this Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 11, which is a convertible, flips around like most yogas. Uh, normally, I think it was like 500 bucks in the store, and it's down to – it's like 200 bucks off, 200 some bucks off, $279. And this is more of like a, I guess I don't want to call it a kid's tablet, but it is, it's running um, four gig of RAM with a smallish, well, medium-ish SSD for a ta- for a, a convertible, 128 gig. Uh, it does have a 12 hours battery life, which is interesting, depending on how, how you use it, obviously. It does not have, um, 
cellular data, which isn't necessarily surprising, but I, we are seeing more and more where there's there's you know a SIM SIM enabled or an eSIM, and I really like the direction we're going when we do include those. Of course, it adds a little cost. Of course, pretty much everywhere you go, you do have Wi-Fi, and pretty much uh, at this point, most people will be tethering with their phones if they need to. I like the look of this. Go to the site and check it out if you want uh, the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 11e, I guess, uh, which is now down to $279 on, well, Amazon. Yeah, it's a nice nice looking little device here. Uh, yeah, four, 4 gigs DDR3. Uh, it, it does have a solid state drive, so yeah, it, it, it looks like a neat little device. That I, if I wasn't saving, I would probably pick one up right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, decent price. So speaking of good prices, the HP Elite X3, the price has dropped on that. Originally, this did uh, list price was seven ninety nine, which included included the desk dock. Uh, of course, it did not include the lap dock. That would be another six hundred bucks or something ridiculous. And I don't know exactly when the price dropped. Last I remember, it was not seven ninety nine, but six ninety nine. And then I looked, uh, I guess yesterday, the day before, and it had dropped another hundred bucks. Maybe that was several weeks ago. Maybe that was yesterday, but it definitely is a decent price. And let's put this in, into perspective. That's the same price as the Lumia 950, yeah, 950 when it came out, and that was at least through Microsoft. And then it was, I think it was um, 650 bucks through. I forget. There's a fifty dollar difference between AT and T and Microsoft, but I forget which one was which now. It's like a year and a half ago. Jeez. And obviously the Elite X3 is, you know, a wonderful device um, in many ways. We're not going to dig into it, but we do have a review on the site. I think that was Mahidi who did that. I don't actually remember. but And uh, Snap 820 runs Continuum rather well. It does have iris and fingerprint scanner. Um, and some of them, or at least the unlocked version, does have dual SIM, which is pretty cool. And uh, it's... If you're still looking for a Windows 10 mobile device, this would be it. We're really not expecting uh, the successor to this until the very end of the year. And that's not to say you would buy this now and buy its successor in November or something. But uh, it's worth considering. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's a good deal yep. if, that's what, yep. if that's what you want. All righty. Let's see. Next, I guess on next the... one's mine too. Here, you get you get a lot of Vernon tonight. Yep, I, you have my pity. <laughs> um, so this is something that I'm basically just reading a headline, and then I'm going to um, give my biased opinion. Google announces Windows Partner Program to bring Windows workload to its cloud platform. So first of all, Google had a thing today or yesterday. And, of course, Google's allowed to have things. Microsoft has things. Apple has things. Samsung has things, events. I have no idea what this Google thing was about. I don't really care. I have a lot of things in my life, and this was not something I was going to devote my time to. But it's on. The, it was important enough to put on, the, on the, the, the site. And I just find it interesting that Google is working with Windows. I mean, they, they, what they're calling the Windows, they're announcing their Windows Partner Program. And uh, it brings Windows workloads to cloud platform. All right. Well, cool. But it's so weird because they have been such arch enemies for such a long time, especially when there, when I believe that there was still the threat of Windows Phone towards Google, you know, Android. Now, obviously, it was a very um, uh, disparate percentage as far as market share and it's gotten only worse but windows phone had something going for it and it was starting to pick up momentum and it was obvious because both ios and android did copy many ui aspects of it and and features and things like that whatever Hmm. but google uh knows that they would not be much without windows operating system that's obviously where Chrome lives, and you know Google Search would not be in off much at all without um, a Windows PC. Of course, there's phones, but so this is just in general. This is interesting that they're partnering up, or they're having you know 
they're working together on this to some extent and uh or rather really just more except more interesting than anything that they are not trying to murder each other mm -hmm. so it's like they, just for one second they just they just go okay okay it's it's fine you can be you i can be me yeah and if you want some actual information on this just go to the site because i'm not giving you much here <laughs> all right my um, my okay. voice is not giving out but i got a little frog in it go for it andy what do you got all right all righty and uh, as for uh, some more interesting or not maybe more interesting i guess uh some big changes are coming to the user interfaces for both groove and movies and tv and these changes are currently live on, a, at the very least, the slow ring of app updates. There was some stuff that I think we talked about last week where uh, fast ring doesn't get updates to apps as fast as the slow ring, hmm. which is kind of misleading uh, when you think about the name, but it's just a temporary thing. But uh, yeah, the current updates are rolled out to both slow and fast, have not yet hit production, and I don't know if they'll hit production before... Uh, the creator's update launches for everyone, but we'll we'll see when it happens. And these are interesting because they go in a very different direction than what, what we've seen before. And the uh, Groove update uh, features some changes like, for example, it, and keep in mind, this is not as big a change as movies and TV, which we'll get into soon, but uh, it adds a tabbed pivot interface to the music library. It also removes your Groove and replaces it with an equally identical uh, recommended tab. It's got all the same features, all the same design, but it's bringing those tabs back, which features some much more, I guess, traditionally Microsoft-y design look to it than uh, the hamburger menu has. Then as for movies and TV, it just completely dishes the hamburger menu entirely. The design is completely new. If I had to compare it to anything, I would compare it to the Photos app, and it has the same gigantic flaw that the Photos app currently has, where they're, it's got j nice pivot nice pivot tabs, but they are gigantic. Like, they are huge. There's this huge margin at the top of the screen. It, ju it just really feels weird. If they just made text a bit smaller and not as heavy, it would look much nicer. But the rest of the design, the design is pretty solid. It's very nice-looking... But and my only real complaints are the pivot tabs and the fact that whenever you click anything in the store there, it just instantly ta opens up the Windows Store as opposed to opening it in the app like Groove does. Yeah. It, it, it looks nice, though, and I think they'll get things ironed out as time goes on. Okay, as far as the terminology for, for here, let me add to this. This Going from album, you know, it used to be um, yeah, album, song, and artist, and yeah, I didn't really like that necessarily. Switching from that to my music is better, I think. I like that. Hmm. Conversely, switching from my groove to recommended, come on, grow a pair, Microsoft. Do something it, unique. This is yeah, that, 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 this, it was weird to me, really, because like they were, it seemed like they were building that up to be a named feature that they could use to sell the brand, or, or not, not sell the brand, but uh, as in sell it on people yeah not like they're now i'm not i don't want anyone to think i'm saying oh that microsoft's gonna solve group no 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 i just mean like they are it's like it's like they have that as their named feature that they can use in advertising and people will see that name and know yes that is a microsoft thing mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of something comparative but it is 12 48 a.m it's so, okay uh, i have another analogy you, here. you can think of your own long long ago with windows 7 windows phone 7 it was the Windows Phone Mark, uh, Windows Phone Marketplace. Go in there. That's where your apps were: music, podcasts. Uh, no, podcasts weren't directly in there, uh, depending on the version. And, um, and and yeah, that's what. And, and movies were in there too. And it was the marketplace. Marketplace was different than the Apple App Store or the iOS Play or well, Google. Or, well, uh, Android Google Play Store. Why not call it Marketplace? I love that. And then they switched it to Windows Store. Come on. Just call it, I mean, be unique. Have, have, don't, what I, don't what follow. What I found funny there is that that was, is that uh, the Marketplace branding, I'm pretty sure that was started with uh, the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. and, well, it might, uh, I think know, Zoom, it, it the, I think Zoom even had Marketplace branding. I don't exactly remember. Yeah. Well, I should say the Zoom software most definitely had that. 
I don't recall if the Zune hardware necessarily. Well, anyway. Yeah, there because I know there was the uh, Xbox 360 Marketplace, and uh, the Zune Marketplace does ring a bit of a bell. Mm. So I think that you know that might have just been a Microsoft's word of the week for a while, but it actually sounded nice as a brand. Yeah, that makes sense. As a, Why? I mean, just I, I will say that it's it's not like it really matters, but. Windows Marketplace sounds much nicer than Windows Store, yes. but whatever. It's but just that, little brand that stuff. That was like half a decade ago. So we're back to the My Groove thing. What is wrong with My Groove? Recommended, bleh, like that. Anybody can uh, recommend uh, crap. It should. I, I guess it's. I guess that if I had to wager why this change was made, I'd say they had five different focus groups and. Three of the five focus groups said, I got no idea what this tab is. I don't feel like clicking it. So change the name. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's nice. But if it says my, okay, and it's it's your app, right? I mean, you're in it. You're logged in. Would that not either already, uh, you know, suggest ownership, obviously, or lead you to wonder what that is? Come on. And it was, it's in the list. I mean, the curated stuff was fantastic. Not perfect, but really, really good. Uh, I'd look at the very least, at the very least, it's same functionality wise. But I will say that if, if I think about the feature or rather the name, my groove, it is good as a brand name, I think. Mm -hmm. But as I think about that, what is, what do I immediately think? I think, okay, that sounds like it's my library. Mm -hmm. So that maybe that was what was a sticking point. Because again, I don't think they just randomly decided to change something that sounded pretty nice out of the blue. It's got to be some focus group thing that we don't understand or it just something, you know, it's something for people on a higher pay grade and people with access to Microsoft corporate stuff. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I have, I pulled it up here and I, I've been saying it wrong here. It's actually your groove. I didn't get the update yet. So I still have your groove. Andy, I have your groove. I don't oh. know. Do you have, do you have my groove? Yeah, I, I I might. Okay, you, um, but could I have mine back? <laughs> no, it's updating. I'm not going to get it. <laughs> no one's going to get it. <laughs> it. Your groove, my groove. Though, I mean, it's just pretty much interchangeable there with all the things I said previously. It's it's to the same effect for me. But I just like that it showed you know what you recent pl- recently played. Of course, I mean that's yeah, that's it, simple I mean, enough. Just, but and just thank thankfully all that stuff is still there. I mean everything feature wise is identical. Yeah, just. It's you know just the name recommended for you. I mean, but it's not. It's not even recommended for me now. It's just recommended by who? That that tells me that it's not necessarily even to my liking. It's just it's well. It's not. It's not exactly recommended uh, by anybody. It is recommended by the robots that live deep within Microsoft. It's HQ recommended and by uh whatever. Let's see. Here. Recommended by the robots. Yeah. Hey, that's that's a, that's a good band name. Some somebody somebody save that. It's recommended uh, by, you know, Florence and the Machines new album that did a a promo. I should say, I should say more so. um, Who's who's uh, Taylor Swift? She does deals with different music people, mostly app iTunes, I think. I'm sure she did a deal or will do a deal with Microsoft and get her stuff in here for cheaper, or even worse, Microsoft will pay her extra to get her music in recommended, which I don't freaking want. Nothing against Taylor Swift, but I want what was recommended for me, not what's recommended because uh, the marketing it's, it's, deal. It's just, and okay, I'm going on a rant here. Let's let's move. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I will. I will say also, you know, uh, what's interesting, what really interests me about uh, some of the you know new pivot design stuff is that this is something that showed up in the photos app a while ago, and I do believe it is part of Project Neon. I mean, like, when it comes to changes in design guidelines and stuff, I still uh, consider the same classification of, okay, you know what? This is something that is definitely tied to that. Hmm. And with uh, movies and TV in particular, something that does interest me there as well is uh, that this design, the more I look at it, and I'm cha- I'm checking around with the scaling on it right now, what particularly interests me here is that this is this is tablet optimized. Like, for example, there is there is a real difference between a mobile app, as in a phone app, and a tablet app. Mm-hmm. And 
if you want to see the difference, you compare the old movies and TV design when you made the window small, and then you compare it with the new one. And with the new one, I mean, like when I change it to the size, you'd get on a, uh, say, a, a uh, port portrait, yeah, portrait mode orientation screen. What I see is not a phone app like you'd get with, heck, even Groove now. What I see is a tablet app, and you can tell that with the gigantic featured images for stuff on the Explore page, the ge just larger elements in general, and it's not, it, it's, I, I, I'm getting, putting this in a way that's getting repetitive, I'm sure, but it has this huge focus on showing big images, big content, and very, very lively, I guess. There's a lot going in, in the, on this design, or a lot going on in this design, and it looks good. But, uh, it's, you can, t there is a different, clear difference between a app that is designed to run on a phone and a PC, and it is an app that's designed to run on a tablet and a PC, if that makes any sense there. Uh, it must not make that much sense to Microsoft. I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it, I'm it, just, it, it makes, it, it makes a lot of them sense to them, I think. Hmm. But, uh, I'm jaded yeah, right now. That, All right. Okay. That's my almost 1 a.m. rant of the week. Okay, what do we got next here? Um, oh, so in our <laughs> in our uh, in our segment called "Dying Services," this is a new one, and I hope it doesn't show up next week. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we don't have this segment uh, every week. But Microsoft's social or so.cl social network is shutting down in the middle of this month. Well, boy, only like six days from it's now, Mar March March fifteenth. Yeah. So five days now. It's almost about just under six for you, but uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, social is a, uh, if memory serves, it was a side project by a group of interns to begin with, so I'm not shocked by this. Yeah. And it, it launched in the Windows 8 era. In fact, I think it was a preview back when Windows 8 was a preview, and it was a little social network that I feel like Microsoft just gave a group of interns a green light. Said, you know what, if this turns into anything, maybe we'll. Uh, see what happens but you know what we can just pay to host it you can uh, throw it together maybe you won't get paid for it it's just a side project keep that in mind and they went ahead they did that and they created a very neat little network that i honestly liked but by the time i went and checked it out it was pretty much dead anyways there's still some active users on the site but it is mostly a ghost town you'll see on the gigantic site-wide feed that there's a like just stuff that's basically either a spam or b stuff trying to convert you to Hinduism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not. I've noticed it isn't necessarily uh, very uh, Western based, Western focused. That isn't bad or anything, but it. Um, yeah, that's just it, kind it, you of know, actually feeling though. Every get. single time, every single time I've opened up the uh, public feed, I've seen not. I've seen like a stream of five posts in a row trying to convert me to a different religion. Hmm. <laughs> every single time. Okay. Well, but, uh, yeah, I, it was boy. It was several years ago when this first came out, I, or you know, came out in public beta. I didn't get in on private beta or anything, and it was kind of fun to fiddle around with. It was interesting, and there were some. They kind of thought of it as, um, uh, boy, I think I'm too tired to think of what it was, but basically a bit of a, a search for s school in a way. Like it was, it was a, a little bit like Pinterest slash bing slash um crowdsourcing in a way and um i guess all those are pretty similar anyway but yeah i mean it's going away and it it uh, rounds out our microsoft's dying service uh services segment of the episode yeah and it, it's it's kind of sad because uh i will say that i like this site's design it was never really a uh never really a bad site like I mean, yeah, dead, but <laughs> it just like des design wise and feature wise, it never had anything wrong with it. I don't think. I mean, my of course my usage wasn't heavy. I hopped in as it was on its way out the door, but it was a it was a nice little network that had basically nothing going on. But that wasn't the worst thing ever, you know. I mean, like heck, you can look at it and. uh yeah, I look at it right now, and instead of seeing religious posts, I'm seeing people talking about some Lumias. So, well, yeah. that's good because you would have a, a a niche inside of inside a niche. It well, it was, yeah. I mean, it was basically the uh, neat little niche Microsoft network, and you 
And obviously, the people you'd find here were, for the most part, Microsoft super fans. You'll see you you'd see uh, you know again aside from the Hinduism, you'd see you'd see quite a bit of a uh, Lumia talk here and there. You'd see some people who occasionally talked about video games. And looking at it now, it's a uh, it's I think the g- goodbye posts have replaced anything else. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Well, speaking about video games and the something that is certainly not on its way out, what do we have? What's going on with Scorpio this week? All right. So Project Scorpio, a quick little rundown once again for that, is that it is Microsoft's next game console. It is the, it's it's not a successor to the Xbox One as much as it is a new iteration, just as the Xbox One S was a slim uh, version of the Xbox One, of course. It seems that now consoles are entering a phase where we, instead of having just regular slim and then that's about it although or if you're Sony you have like five different slim versions of your console or if you're yeah a, if you're an elementary or junior high school uh, boy at least you have slim regular and husky as far as uh, <laughs> jeans <laughs> I really don't know why I remember that that was a good I don't know 20 some years ago yeah, this is well. If for comparison, I guess this is the Husky console. This that, is the, you know, that's or, I although it's more even... strength than it's more strength than fat. Because <laughs> we are entering now an era where uh, there are three types of consoles. You have the version that comes out on launch. You have the slim version that comes out a couple of years later, and then uh, maybe a year or so after, or maybe a month after the slim, you get the Husky. I, I uh, like okay. I, I like that line. More strength than fat. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, this, like, for example, you know, looking at Sony, they had the PS4, they had the uh, PS4 Slim, and then the PS4 Pro, which, not as big as a jump ahead as the Scorpio will end up being. Husky's better. Look at- Husky's a lot better. <laughs> that's Husky over Pro any day. Let's let's pitch that one to Microsoft. It's, it's the Xbox One Husky. But uh, then Nintendo, they had the uh, 3DS, then they had the uh, 3DS XL, and then, of course, they had the new 3DS, which also got an XL version, just to be extra confusing. But still, it's the same principle. And now Microsoft, you know, they had the Xbox One, Xbox One S, and now the Xbox One Scorpio slash Husky slash probably the Elite, seeing how they already own that brand, and it's doing well. Oh, yeah, but, good, good point. I like the Elite. Yeah, yeah they got, That's you good. know, for people who aren't, uh, familiar they have xbox one elite controllers those go for over a hundred dollars they are for people who care about the games they're playing quite a bit and that's pretty much what you're gonna market you're probably going to be in for scorpio it is a much more expensive system most likely because it is going to be a very powerful system it's going to run 4k natively not just upscaling like you know basically every other system out on the market's doing right now is going to be complete native 4K rendering. It's going to imp- include some improvements for even just 1080p displays, though. So, you know, they can use super sampling, which is the opposite of downsampling, and you get a nice, nice, uh, high rendering resolution toned down into a 1080p image, and is going to look really good. And it's going to be very high visual fidelity. It's probably not going to be the most selling version of uh, the Xbox One. You know, if memory serves, uh, Quick, Mike Ibarra, I hope I'm saying his last name right, but uh, Mike Ibarra slash Quick, I believe he said that they uh, already expect that they're going to sell far more Xbox One S units than uh, Xbox Scorpio units, or Project Scorpio, but you get the idea. And uh, that's probably going to come down due to price. And I would imagine, I'm yeah. I, yeah. And speaking of the price, we're probably not going to find that one out for a while. Microsoft has their E3 event on the Sunday before the rest of the main E3 stuff on June 11th, and that is likely going to be a Scorpio event. What I, my prediction there is that we are going to find out the price, the exact release date, and all the games that are coming day one with optimizations. And that's going to be nice, but until then, there is a store page that has popped up in the Microsoft Store for Project Scorpio. And it's really nothing new other than, yeah, there's just an entry in the store now, so and that's worth mentioning. Mm, excuse me. It's got a nice little button that lets you sign up for email updates to find out when the product becomes available. Presumably, you'll get an email once pre-orders become available as well. So you might want to go in there and check that out. 
it's also a good place to get a recap of information as it's just got you know the basic bullet points of what's intended for the project like most uh most powerful game console yet 4k is a target resolution etc etc and they also have the e3 reveal teaser there as well in case you'd like to see the little motherboard with the 4k logo again so uh yeah not the uh biggest change in the world there it also is worth noting that games are already starting to be announced that have yet like they're announcing that they will be optimized for scorpio which uh middle earth uh shadow of mordor that came back out in 2014 oh you woke me up there you talked about Ooh, Mordor wait. and Middle Earth. Okay, I'm I'm awake again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a video game. You can go back to sleep, maybe. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. And it's getting it's getting a sequel called Shadow of War, which is coming in August this year. And they sh- they've shown off some uh, gameplay footage of it. And it looks really good. But they also announced that it is coming as an Xbox Play Anywhere title. And this is this is yet another big AAA game that's coming as Xbox Play Anywhere, where you can just uh, buy once, play it on both your PC, your Xbox, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, actually, I think there's only one game that would uh, run on it. There, there's there's a couple games actually that might run on a tablet. So that that's kind of a third form factor there, where you got a Windows tablet, you have a Xbox One, and a Windows desktop computer. That obviously. Not the majority of games that will run on that tablet, but there are a few titles in there, which uh, I believe the most recent one was a Rip, Riptide GP Renegade, which looked real fun. I'm probably going to have to check that one out soon on my free time. And yeah, it's just there's a, buy once digitally, get it on every platform. That's so when it was Middle Earth Shadow of War was announced that it's coming to Xbox One, Windows 10, etc. And it's an Xbox Play Anywhere title that will come to Project Scorpio. And they speci- and any Xbox One game will run on Project Scorpio, but it's worth noting, you know, that they specifically mention, yes, it is headed to Scorpio. Which uh, obviously means it's going to end up with optimizations for it. So yeah, that's that's going to be nice. I'm looking forward to the Xbox Plus size in coming 20, 2021, <laughs> right? It yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's, not. You're probably going to need the Plus size for uh, Shadow of War because I took a look in here at the uh, store page for it, and it says approximate size sixty point five gigabytes. Yikes! Yeah, yeah. Um, which actually, my data cap has actually got upgraded lately. Which of course that came with a bill up. I thought it was free until I get the che- to get the notice in the mail. But uh, yeah, hmm. I'm now rocking 600 gigs a month, so maybe I can actually handle some of this. Cool. All right. Well, that is it for the actual show. But yeah. we yeah now we now we need the uh, episode end banter. Well, y- yeah. Um, I want to hear from the listeners what. What we're screwing up. <laughs> if we do make a mistake on the show, we are very encouraged to let us know and we could make a point to correct it. We don't want to mislead anyone. So you're always encouraged to do that, uh, folks. But also, we want to know what you think about the podcast, the parts that you enjoy, the parts you think are kind of lame. Maybe us talk about the weather at the beginning of every show. Like, it wasn't even like on purpose. <laughs> it just kind of comes up. But also, we do want to know what you think about streaming live video. So, of course, we are we are not the only Microsoft podcast. There's a few others out there. They do a good job. Sometimes they also stream video, stream live video. We're considering doing that, not because that is the cool thing to do because other people are doing it. It's because perhaps the listeners want to, to see or hear or consume it that way. But that's up to you guys if, if we can make it happen, of course. So get us your feedback. If you think that streaming video, live streaming video, is something that would be extra valuable to you, you would get more out of it, let us know. Tell us why you think that would be helpful. Maybe you've watched uh, live streams from other folks and you, there's things you particularly enjoy or some things you really think are kind of lame one way or the other. Please let us know, and we want to, if we go live video, live streaming video, we want to do it as well as we can without, honestly, without um, distracting from the audio show. Because as a podcaster, uh, 
personal experience, many, many times more people listen to the show than those handful people that watch the show. But there's exceptions to that. Um, I'm not saying that we're going to do a live video, but we want to see what you think about it and we'll consider it. Thanks again for listening to the show, of course, folks. This, uh, thanks for listening to the MS Power User podcast. You can follow the site on Twitter at MS Power User. And, of course, by doing so, you'll know when the new episode is available, which is pretty much right on the money every Friday morning. Be sure to subscribe to the show. Uh, that way it's always in your feed right for, there for you. And if you feel compelled to interact with us individually, you can do so on Twitter. My name, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Vernon E.L. And Andy is on Twitter at FusionFan45. And it's been quite a long time since I've suggested that, f- listeners, if you think this show is valuable to you and potentially valuable to someone else, tell a friend. And you can go into iTunes, if that's your thing, and give us a review or review us anywhere else that offers reviews for the show, I guess. That's certainly not why we do it, and the reviews themselves don't necessarily really get us, get our, the name out there that much. Much more, more powerful is your opinion and who you speak with as far as the show and what, how you value it. Perhaps other, other people will as well. That's it for the show. I hope you have a wonderful week, everyone. Take care. See you later.